Now let's look at Russia. Things have been chaotic in the country for a while. It has been at war for over two years against its neighbor, Ukraine. Ukraine is backed by almost every Western country. The West keeps imposing sanctions on Russia and anyone working with Russia. What has been the result? Despite the unprecedented challenges we faced over the past few years, positive trends are strengthening in the domestic economy. As you know, Russia's GDP increased by 3.6% last year, and the statistics for the first months of this year show that it continues to show good rates. That was Russian President Vladimir Putin. He was speaking at a business forum a few days ago. He expects decent economic growth this year as well, following the 3.6% growth seen in 2023. And this isn't Putin throwing some unverified numbers around. Western institutions have given similar reports, 3.6% growth in 2023. That's for Russia, 3.6%, despite an ongoing war. And it's about to get better for Russia. This year, they're expected to grow faster than all advanced economies, even the US. What is fueling this rapid growth? The war economy, a military industrial complex working on overdrive. But another factor is also playing a part, the return of Russian nationals. People who fled the country are making their way back home. Back in 2022, when the Ukraine war began, thousands of people fled Russia. Some took the first flights out of Moscow, St. Petersburg. Others left by road, crossing into neighboring countries like Georgia or Kazakhstan. The people fleeing were often military-aged men, men who were afraid of getting conscripted. But there were others too people who disagreed with the war, who ideologically opposed Putin. They thought they would flee rather than live under him any longer. And at that time, Putin had described them, and I'm quoting, he called them scum and traitors. More than a million people left Russia in 2022. First in February, when the war was announced, and then in September, when Putin mobilized 300,000 reservists. Most of the people who left were relatively young, of fighting age, but this also means that they were also working age. So a chunk of Russia's workforce fled the nation in 2022. They could have contributed to the economy had they stayed. Their absence slowed Russia's growth down. But now things have changed. These Russians are going back home. There are a number of reasons for that. Some could not make a living abroad. They tried to start afresh. It did not work out, so they went back. Others are being forced to go back. Their resident permits have been expiring and countries are wary about reviewing them. Even places that initially welcomed Russians, like Turkey. At present, there are about 60,000 Russians in Turkey. In 2022, the number was as high as 132,000, 1,32,000 Russians. Less than half the Russians who went to Turkey have remained after two years. And this is the case in a lot of countries, even friendly ones, like Armenia. Or Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan had 146,000 Russians in 2022. By the end of last year, about 80,000 remained. That number would have gone down further in the last four months. So it seems that some host countries have been pressuring Russians to go back home. That's the second reason why they're heading home. There's also a third reason. Discrimination. Think about the war in Ukraine. Think about how it has been portrayed. Putin versus the West, Russia against the free world, dictatorship versus democracy. That has been the narrative in large parts of the world. And this shapes perceptions, even about ordinary Russian people, people who have nothing to do with the war, who actually ran away from it. About 25% of these Russians say they face discrimination from the people of the country they fled to or from governments or other institutions. This Russophobia has jaded some of the people who left. So they have made their way back home and caused Russia's reverse migration, which is helping the country. The returning Russians are contributing to the economy again at a higher rate than those who stayed behind. So their return is a boon for Putin and it marks another failure of the West's policy towards Russia.